Welcome to Samu Capital Radio this morning, uh, Professor. Talofa, Arthur uh, Masanga, and Talofa to the um, Samoa Capital Radio listeners. Maro, it's good to have you uh, hosted in our Pacific uh, radio station. It's lovely to be here. <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Professor, I see that you've been involved in a lot of other things, which we'll come to um, later. But um, to take, I guess, for the audience, I see that you've been involved in a lot of research on uh, therapies for some of the treatment of the diseases uh, and I thought so what discovery have you made for health um, or prevention or contributed to at this point in time? At this point in time, <laughs> right. all right. I, I started off doing quite a lot of what I, I would refer to as basic research so we just wanted to understand how does how does your immune system react to um, mm -hmm pathogens or you know bacteria or viruses yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was really quite interested in whether um, the immune system could actually fight off cancers and there's some good proof now that that can mm. happen but when i started it was quite a controversial idea so we contributed to the sort of basic research around that concept that the immune system could actually recognize a cancer cell and and kill it um, so that that was some of the sort of basic research that we did and we were always really interested in seeing whether we could take those basic discoveries and and turn it into a treatment that could potentially go to the clinic now that's a lot of work and we've tried a few things uh, we've tried uh, some vaccines that we designed um, to go into melanoma patients um, and uh, we we showed that the the concepts that we uh, had had sort of come up with in the lab actually did work in patients um, so you could stimulate an immune response that looks like it could target cancers um, but there's a lot of competition in the space and so while we we're doing that work uh, a few drugs came on to the oh. market they <laughs> came up with a similar idea so we pipped at the post there okay uh, um, but nonetheless, we feel like we contributed in a, in a way to mm. the, the whole concept and we were, you know, brave enough to stick out. Yeah, you yeah, said so. it was controversial when you started. Why and, was that? Uh, a lot of people thought that um, the idea that the immune system was capable of eliminating a, a, a right. tumour cell um, was never going to work. It, it, it worked a lot in, in the test tube, if you like, in the lab, um, just looking at tumour cells. And it worked in in small animals like the mouse, mm -hmm. but whenever people had tried it in patients, mm -hmm. uh, it it was never as effective. And there have been a, a number of um, treatments that had got all the way through to testing in in patients, but didn't get very far. Mm -hmm. And so it was because of a sort of bad backstory, uh, mm -hmm. unsuccessful treatments. But actually, the the whole concept's not new. So back in the wow. early 19th, uh, 19, 1900s yes. into the <clears throat> 1930s, um, there was a researcher in New York who started injecting bacteria into into tumours and seeing whether that would initiate a, mm -hmm. an immune response to the bacteria that would also kill the mm -hmm. tumour cell. And he was actually seeing reporting responses way back in the, you know, in the 20s and the small 30s. the pox or the cowpox or... Uh, the was they, it was, it was a, um, uh, it wasn't anything as serious as that. Oh, it was okay. a, a sort of skin right. associated oh, bacteria. Mm. Um, and just, uh, you know, injected it in. And he, he, he made this, um, this extract from the bacteria. It's this really bright, red color we've actually got a little vial of it and um right. at, the, at the malligan it was um mm. it was called coley's toxins because it, it, it was the sort of toxins that were released by the bacterium mm. um and injected that and it, it it did um actually cure some patients but it was a very variable product to make some some toxins were better than others mm. and um at the time in the 30s chemotherapy came on which was a lot more regulated and much easier to make. And so what was 
called immune therapy back then in her 30s, lost favour and chemotherapy and surgery and radiation therapy all became the treatments and immune therapy lost favour until, you know, when we started and there's groups all around the world sort of picked up the idea and in the mid 90s, 1990s sort of building on those original concepts and and now there's some really successful drugs. So where do you see us heading? I think at the moment um, the the drugs that have made the biggest impact they tend to unleash really strong immune responses that kill the cancer Mm -hmm. but they also um, kill some of your own normal cells as well so it's it's like the early days of chemotherapy where the Mm -hmm. chemotherapies were quite dangerous like like using a gun the old blunderbuss gun that spread bullets everywhere you kill your target but you kill everything else around it and it's a bit like that at the moment a bit more sophisticated so i think what we're going to get is immune based therapies that are going to be a lot more targeted more like a using a vaccine rather than these um, Mm. the the strategies they use are just sort of unleash Mm. immune responses all over the place when when i read the material preparing for this interview i thought what's going to happen with all these pills if you guys are going to come up with something they're sort of folk targeting it you're going to do away with all the pills we take well i think most of them. i think there's possible you know a, there's a lot of diseases um that actually involve the immune system that hadn't been appreciated uh, you know things like heart disease yeah. and, um, and obesity they all involve the mm. immune system so drugs that alter the way your body reacts, your immune system reacts, is the way a lot of medicine's moving. And so it's possible that we will be treating diseases with vaccines. And I don't think we'll be injecting them. I think there's going to be nicer ways to do it. Um, so I think so are really you scared of. Or, yeah, yeah, a lot of people are scared of injections. <laughs> but also so the oral, oral, <laughs> oral ones. Vaccine will be you know, it's a bit tricky to go down the oral route because uh, um, you, your stomach and okay. is got acidic and you've yes. got to, the drug's got to survive or your vaccine's got to survive. But there are people working on that. I mean, one thing that's really exciting is these little micro patches that you put on. It's just like a bandage. Yeah. And they've got a whole series of little micro needles tiny wee thing yeah, sort of. and, and then you just put it on like a oh. put a sticky tape and uh, and they sort of dissolve into the skin so there's no pain associated what, whatsoever it's just mm. like putting a sticky if you turn on. into like a fashion thing design so that people, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and people will, will like you instead of putting it on yeah <laughs> If it's anything like a sticky plaster, the worst bit will be taking it off, won't it? Just ripping your hair off. Or it's, um, yeah, I think there's going to be new immune based therapies. It mm. is really is um, changing the way medicine. Yeah. Thank you. I hope I can actually catch up with all the things we've been saying <laughs> in English now. Let me try and translate some of it. Ole tato afa fonga pinto si sila mai mo to mai mo mai lung ole. Ole social media ma fata si nema professor Ian Hermans. Uh, o le satala noi le vaenga na taula ye le ne fo i su su enga ye o le fo i taula i va enga o tun fiti molkanisa ile amatanga ina wala to baba ai i sui ta to immune system po vaenga o tino ta to le te ena i fa mai pisa e ni i tal tun ce le i la rangi i pe e fo i baba ai my dear, fine of feeling my tow tongue on a sweet to tongue or tattoo, yet for fung a lady, a little foot tongue at her. In a face swing a tongue for your tea and nay farm. Yet pay over hang on a lena amata my yay. So sola yearly tow tongue a tassy ever toes full of penna yet at war. Now matay on a mower, your tongue of fitty more canisa. Ya for ye for ye two ye, my two lang of a penna. Yet now on my little time, Milena Tawal, a vinyl or chemotherapy, it took Tilita to a Madame Lam, my pet for ye, for your tongue of tin or canis. Yer for love, ye see vinyl tino out fear. A way a lame of fire on a tow lai, it is yamale to pull fallible. I have a vinyl to tone or tin or lay to ye. Yet I see a fear voice. A Lucian Malaud voice the matter. Only take me nail at vinyl and not ill tan long. Along a lue and day, if I am a e taula e tonu wa le le afoletong fiti e le le afolisiamma le te afia 
Thank you for that, uh, Ian. Perhaps uh, <coughs> let's come back. Uh, I know uh, we've been pushing for the last two years uh, people to get vaccinated in this country, in New Zealand. We've been doing our part to mobilize our Pacific community to get vaccinated. Um, what's the, the, you know, the, just to remind our listeners about the vaccine. What does it, what is it? How does it work? How does the vaccine work? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. And it, it involves, um, um, immune cells and there's a couple of immune cells that are really important and they're, mm. they've been given convenient names B cell and a T cell B cell and T cell B cell and a T cell so a B cell um, I like to think of these as, as soldiers yes. there's a war going on yeah. and B cells they, um, they're like soldiers with, with submachine guns they shoot out right. sophisticated bullets that mm. we call antibodies um, whereas, whereas T cells, they're more like sort of targeted artillerymen. They 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 find where the um, the cells that viruses are hiding in, and they they actually kill kill right. a cell to stop. Because the virus actually just takes over a cell. Like its whole purpose is to infect the cell and make more copies of itself. So it needs right. the cell. And it absolutely needs a cell. It uses all the cell's machinery to make copies of itself. So T cells are designed to find those cells that are infected mm. and just kill them, and that'll stop the, the spread of infection. Mm. So you've got these antibodies. They go around and they actually um, latch on to the virus when it's between cells, when it's moving between right. cells, and just coat it and stop it from infecting. It just oh. basically block it from getting into a cell. Whereas the T cell goes around looking for cells to see if there's a sign that it's been infected mm. and um, kills it. Mm. So that's how a, a immune response works. Yes. Um, but uh, your body had to develop a pretty sophisticated system to be able to recognize what is a, a bad bacteria or, or a virus compared to in something that is not dangerous. Yes. And also to recognize that there are structures that are your own that you shouldn't be attacking. So, mm. no, so it's got to be able to work out this, this thing that I've encountered is not my own. And two, it could be dangerous. So it's got to right, kill it. Right. And when you're born, you don't know what you're going to be attacked by. Mm. So the immune system has evolved these, this, these cells. So you've got your B cell and your T cells. And they have actually, each, each one of those has a series of what we call receptors on, Recept yes. on the cell surface. I, I like to think of them as hands. Yes. Uh, you've got 50,000 copies of this hand on the cell surface that can grip things. Mm. But they're, they're not very sophisticated hands. They can only hold one position, sort of like a Lego hand. Mm. You know, but every, every different B cell or T cell has 50,000 copies of a slightly different hand that can bind to a molecular shape. Right, right. And your body just pumps out whole billions and billions of B cells and T cells, each one that can recognize a slightly different molecular shape. Mm. So it's anticipating any sort of foreign molecules being thrown at the body. Mm. And um, all of those ones that could potentially um, recognize your own proteins or whatever they're carefully deleted you kill them off very early when right. so they're born and they they basically die within a few hours mm. but everything that's left there's a whole series there's billions of them each one is slightly different receptor so when a, a virus comes in there will be within this huge repertoire of mm. cells that can recognize different molecular shapes there will be a handful that could recognize the virus just right. you know and um just the numbers mm. um but the problem is there's only five of them or six mm. of them. yes so what they, so <coughs> those cells have to do is to is to make copies of themselves so when they see a virus the first thing they do is they make clones of themselves and they make 
billions of clones of themselves. So they go from a handful to billions of them, a big enough army to kill off the virus. And that takes about five or six days. So when you get sick from an infection, what's happening is the virus comes in, those first few cells recognize it, and then they start dividing, and then they start killing. And when you're feeling sick from an infection, you're actually feeling sick because all of these millions of immune mm. cells are, are shooting away, um, doing a bit of damage, killing off the virus. You actually get more sick from the immune response than you do from the virus. Oh, actually. I see. But it's a necessary illness. And then those numbers of those cells come down once mm. the, the virus is cleared. But the big difference is that it never comes right down to five or six anymore. It comes down to several million. Um, and so if you encounter that same infection several years down, down the road, there's going to be a bigger army to respond. So big enough that actually it can deal with the infection within a day or mm. so rather than the seven days. <coughs> Mm. and probably deal with it before you can even feel it so that's why if that's the, the word immune you're immune because you've got enough of these cells um, that are able to kill the virus mm. or the bacteria before you feel any effects whatsoever you don't even know you've got mm. infected and what we're doing with the vaccine is, is to do exactly the same thing is to so expose the body to that virus but you do it in a very careful way so you're exposing the body in a way that you don't mm. get infected or, or ill at all. But you're raising that number mm. of cells so that when you actually get exposed to the real pathogen, you've, all, you've got this enormous army all ready to go. So it's just sort of replicating yeah. what goes on naturally, but doing it in a very sophisticated and targeted mm. way. So I guess from, from the scientist's viewpoint and the research you're doing, is actually helping um, add to what the immune system already is working on. It's a completely natural process. Yes. It, it, it is, it, it, but we've done it in such a way that that first time you're exposed to the to the virus, it's, it's with a part of the virus. So right. you, you're not exposed to the dangerous thing of the virus. Oh. Um, so it's, it's initiating a completely natural mm. immune response, mm. but actually just doing it in a very mm. careful way. The reason why I put this question here because we still have some people who are hesitant. They're not quite sure whether it's safe. Uh, and then there are people that are actually coming up with uh, mis and disinformation, sort of discouraging people from going and doing the right thing. That's right. But uh, obviously, from the research viewpoint, you're only helping what's there already. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's that's the sad thing, really, is that mm. you know, might, it's so much better for you if you just have the vaccine rather than actually get the disease. You've mm. already made this army; it's going to deal with yes. it, and it might not make, in the case of COVID nineteen, make you completely protected against getting sick, but it's it's going to stop you from getting seriously Worse. sick. Yeah. Um, so that army is big enough to mm. to prevent the really, really bad mm. uh, infections that yeah. in people end up in hospital. Mm. And I was just wondering, you know, you were talking about the B and uh, T cell. Is there a ratio of how big these armies are inside you? No, or it's, a, body, it's a good question. Every individual will have to dictate There's, how many they, they have. <laughs> it's a really good question. We And that sort of stuff we, we are really quite keen, um, interested on knowing what is the relationship between B cells and T cells because they you know they act like a good functioning army you need yes, good communication yes, between yes. these cell types and we're our research is looking at that communication I think you can't just have a B cells and alone or T cells alone mm. you've got to have them both so you've got to design your vaccine so you make sure that you get both of them at the right ratio so yeah. it's a really good question <laughs> I, 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 get that, I get that at times, you know, you science must marvel at how God created man. In oh, other words, confiscated sort of body. <laughs> it's yeah. got all these systems in place. It is, it is pretty sophisticated. I, I remember when I was a student mm. finding out about T cells in particular. I mean, a T cells job is really amazing because it has to actually work out what whether a cell is infected or not and it's only got it's only able to look at the outside of the cell yes you can't look inside and i remember how 
how's that problem ever solved? And it turns out that it's a cell functions like a household. At some point, you've got to put out the trash. Yes. And and they put cells have evolved to put the trash out on mm. the cell surface, and that's what they recognise. They, they see bits of virus in the trash cans out on the mm. cell surface. That's, that's how it's done. I mean, remember being blown away by that. Uh, it's just simple explanation, <laughs> but it's very complicated when you're looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank, you, thank you for that. Let me try. Well, that's a good answer to the question now. I'm fully educated about how it works. Well, the facility to me, it took a man to me, all the other meta or the vaccine. I found fear now a lawyer. The other now a lawyer, I told you, fight on the tattoo. The other now found my mum and my two so fit a fit a year if a fang or the vaccine, pull it to it if I get tattoo. It all I hear vang a letter or the P Maliti cells. A P of vang a year, a vang a ami a pair of a pair of fit a fit a year. Esia la le tu ainga siama po vainga ye le ma sani ona va ye tono tato tino el watu loa o mai loa li o ai fa il tonga fiti tapi ina ia o ina ima o le tino tato el mai vainga la na el mai ye so na sala lau solo puru e fana la tato pel fa te te inga na mai ye e ha fa ina mai si vainga o tato to to tonga tato au le tisel e fa pitoa a mai a va ye tolo ainga tanga ta ese de usau tono polisi amalia. O la to wa na fit fit na fa pito ma la to ma lo la to ta pe de va ngan na ya pe o o le o le va ngan na la to so so ngan fa in da ye tamu fa po le se fa ngan a wa ni tele ye va ngan le tino e fa am lu o dia i fa ngan wa fo yo to fit ngan to no ta to tino ye na fa ma ta la fo le ye le tu lang o me ye ta o receptor o mo mo limba le pi pi i ma i va ngan o fo yo o siamba ni to no o sel al tino Ia ma fai naita to to tonga. Ia ma ni fo ila le fai ngol fai fam tala yele ava ile mole sela. Itai pe o le household fa punga le na fai. Itai pe o tono ainga. E itai mi tono tato tino o tumu fo i fai nga de tauna ye i tau le na fa mama. Itai pe fo tono ainga mola pisi ma fai nga fa pena. Ia e fai e stone fiti. Ia ai e ma wai no fusi le ia il fa ainga la fa scientist i fo fo nga le tua. Ita to tino wa le wo ilo wo ye u ma ye wa inga ita pena e fa ita to alu ngal wenga le fa ye la to e fe so so ani ina iya fa ali le ya tiri ma tau la i ya le le fo ilo wa ingo ita to i i de i selama ma fo ima siama ina iya fa ingo fi ali e wa ingo ita to tino lumana ya antono wa inga na le fo yo o ya tiri ye i de buto a a mata onu sue sue e e se fo ilo wa ita to no ita to tino ma ngai yo inga na ma meni. Ya tu no lewa tau mo tu ifa mbranga mo tato. This uh there's been a slow uptake of COVID vaccination by the year five and eleven according to the Ministry of Health website. So everybody is trying to encourage them to go and get vaccinated for their own you know health sort of safety. How do you encourage people to go? Obviously the guardians or parents. And then the kids themselves too. Please go and get a jab. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the Omicron version has has, has changed the whole yes. the whole scene, um, and it's very very infectious. And so there's a very good chance that your child will be exposed to the virus. Mm. And for most children, it's a mild disease, and they will recover. But there is still a small proportion who get very sick and have to go to hospital. Mm. And it's um, very clear from the data that's particularly coming out of the United States that um, if you look at the children that have ended up in hospital, by far the vast majority of them have not been vaccinated. So vaccination will um, give you the security that you're not going to have to rush your kid off to hospital in the mm. middle of the night because they've got right. horrible breathing and difficulties. I, I think that as a parent, that's enough for me. Um, uh, you just would be horrible to see your child yes. in that situation, uh, knowing that you can prevent it with what is a very safe vaccine. Uh, I've had the vaccine three times. I didn't feel it mm. the three times. <laughs> so it's not painful at all. Mm. Um, 
you, the child might become a little bit less listless, you yes, know, a bit yes, tired the next yeah. day. I actually took a good excuse to have a day off the next day mm. after my second <laughs> one. I slept. It was wonderful. <laughs> so the side effects of the vaccine aren't that bad. Um, and, you know, when you weigh that up against the risk mm. uh, of ending up in hospital from Omicron mm. disease. And as I say, Omicron is spreading through the community mm. like wildfire. You know? So there is a, a high mm. chance that your child will get it. As you're thinking, when you said that you slept after your second dose or whatever, yeah. you know, I think as a scientist, you're probably thinking, I wonder what's happening inside my body right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's going on. It's those cells dividing yeah. it's, and, and that's uh, what's going on. It's a good sign, actually. Yes. If, you, if you feel a little bit sick after your vaccine, your immune it's system's working. doing its job. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> ตัวสังหารลิมไมโอสฟูลมันจะสิตัวเทเลียเอลิโอฟีนิลาตัวตุยในเทมิลเน็กอ่าเอลิอะไรเท่าฝั่งมาลูซี่เอาฟูยิม
antibodies prevent the virus yeah. from getting into cells. Um, but there are a number of diseases now where it's too late. People have already got these infections yeah. and um, that become what we call chronic. They've just, they've always got these infections. Mm -hmm. a, a classic case is hepatitis B virus. Um, mm. So that while there's a good prophylactic vaccine, that's one that's given mm. to people to prevent yeah. them from getting the disease. Mm. There's, um, mm. once you've got the disease, it's now recognized that you need a different kind of immune response. So the, you need a different kind of vaccine and, mm. it, and it's going to be used as a, as a therapy. So that's why we call it a therapeutic vaccine. So instead of giving a pill, we're just giving a vaccine and the idea is that we stimulate the sort of immune response that's better at getting rid of infected cells mm -hmm. so it, when um, you've already got the disease it looks like those t cells that i mentioned the ones yes. that test look in the trash cans they are the best ones so what we want is better vaccines vaccines that are really good at making T cell responses mm. to the virus and so that's sort of work we've been doing is really specializing our vaccines to make them much better you were talking about that mm. ratio of yes, B to yes, T cells yes. we want the T cell ratio up and the B cell ratio down right. whereas for pre preventing infection it's the other way around right so it was a very very good question <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah there are a number of diseases where we think this could be important, um, you know, um, HIV, yes. AIDS, um, and the other thing is cancer. So cancer is something that we, is gonna, uh, cancer is a, a vast array of diseases, it's not one mm, disease. Yes. <clears throat> so coming up with a, a vaccine that you give someone, at, you know, a child to prevent them from cancer mm. is, is just not practical mm. but what we hope is that there will you'll be able to design a vaccine that say if you're you're um, diagnosed with cancer that you can try and treat it um, mm. in the same way and and these t-cells they can recognize in the same way that they can recognize a virus infected cell they can actually recognize mm. that a, a cell has as has changed into a cancer cell it's right. because they're, again they're putting signs of this in the in the trash cans on the surface right so the the t cells in theory can recognize a cancer cell and kill it mm. and that's now been proven in the in the clinic there are drugs designed to do that but we want to get a lot more sophisticated mm. and be able to design uh, vaccines for melanoma or vaccines for prostate cancer or breast cancer they all have to be carefully designed but it gets even more sophisticated because um, some one person's melanoma might look quite different from another yes, person's melanoma yes. because they're generated by mutation and it's quite mm. a random yes. type thing. So, it, but the, the the science is advancing so quickly now that you could actually have a, a surgeon take a sample of your tumor and you could send that off to a lab and in theory you could have a vaccine designed specifically for your tumor um, and it wouldn't be of any use to someone mm. else with, with their tumor it's, it's what we call a personalized medicine and that that really is probably going to be the future of cancer treatment is mm. take a sample what does it look like what proteins do you think are in that that cancer design a vaccine against it and get it in there as early as possible to try and get the immune system to, to wipe it out. And we, we think you've got to get in early. That's the key is, is get diagnosed early and get these vaccines mm. in early. So there has there's yet to be a, a vaccine approved for use in cancer like this, but there have been a few early trials of right. this concept. And they're looking really promising and everyone's mm. getting really excited and i think we'll see in the next 10 10 years a whole series of different cancer oh, vaccines oh. coming out so it's a therapy it's a therapeutic vaccine you'll only give it once you've been diagnosed mm. with the disease right so there's a race 
to see who gets to the end first. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I mean, <laughs> as I say, there are cancers, so many diseases, there's lots of room for people to do their research and try and come up with a, mm -hmm. um, their own specialist vaccines. And some of the new technology that was has been really exploited for the COVID-19, so these mm. mRNA vaccines. Yes. They look like they might be the perfect sort of vaccine for doing this because they're really easy to make. The thing, oh. the, it's, it's um, the, the actual manufacturing process has just been simplified so much by making mRNA vaccines. Right. I don't think people have appreciated the amount of work that goes into more traditional vaccines mm -hmm. compared to an mRNA vaccine, which is why they could respond to COVID-19 mm -hmm. so quickly. Was because uh, it's within a, 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 um, a few weeks of the, the virus that causes COVID-19 being actually isolated and they actually worked out mm. what it looks like. Um, they'd already made an mRNA vaccine and it only took a couple of weeks to do that. Oh. The rest of the time was just getting it through all of the manufacturing processes which have to be highly regulated. And yes. So it's a, it's a way of responding very, very quickly. Mm. Um, so we think that those mRNA vaccines, not only are they going to be good for for other mm. infections as, as uh, general vaccines, but they're going to work in this therapeutic vaccine space as well. Right. And is this mainly in the bloodstream or does it apply to other parts of the body? Well, you inject them into the, into the uh, muscle normally, right. yes. um, but they, they they make proteins. The idea is that mRNA is basically the the, the um, sort of the instructions that is given mm. to a cell to make yeah. a given protein. So those um, they those proteins move around in the blood, right. and so but ultimately they first in, the, mm. the first injection gets your muscle cells, and, right. and a few there are a few immune cells and mm. that you get when you inject into yeah. a muscle as well. Yeah, why I asked the question because. Uh, Many Pacific Island people, they die of uh, lung cancer. Yes. And I thought, this treatment you're looking at, hopefully you'll come up with something that will help, help them with the treatment of lung cancer. Yeah, well, so lung cancer is really, um, it's a big issue here in New Zealand mm -hmm. um, and amongst Māori as well. Yes. So uh, I, it is one of the ones that um, the immune system is going to work against and there have been a few drugs um, okay. approved for lung cancer but we need to get it more sophisticated um, and so I think um, there will potentially be cancer vaccines mm. for lung cancer um, and the, the other issue with with diseases like lung cancers is that they are what we call solid solid tumors they make yeah. a make a, a fairly solid mass yeah and um, it's hard to get the immune cells into these solid masses. So um, we need to be able to combine these immune therapies with chemotherapeutic mm. agents or some other agent that actually maybe softens the tumor up mm. somehow so that the T cells get in there or mm. somehow re recreates that solid tumor mass mm. in a way that the T cells function better. And that's, that is where a lot of our work is going at the moment. Actually. Right. So you need something more potent than B and T cells. You need, you need the B and T cells and something else. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that <laughs> there's always something else. You always want more power and everything. But um, yeah. I think the sort of combination therapies, particularly in cancer. So for a long time, we've just had um, chemotherapy yes. and surgery and radiation therapy. Mm. And now we've got immune therapy. And, and a lot of the research that's going on at the moment is can you actually combine them? So com mm. um, and so combining um, immune therapy with chemotherapy is an is a area that I think is, is going to be really right. quite fascinating going forward. Can that chemotherapy just as I say change the, yep. that solid mass to make it a, just that little bit better at the T-cells mm -hmm. getting right. in there and killing it? Okay, thank you. Ole, vangani matatandone ile mo o avo yo tui de fai ne pui pui ta to le vaccine e tele in fai e pui pui ta to ai le mo ta to se nga se nga se 
I only wang and he for your next susu and a pay on the telano a year, Professor Hermans. A tongue of fire in that year, yea, she to a tongue of fit telling us and I said, I'm a waiter to Olonda wing or Lella, see if you will for another pui pui, a Lella a treat for it on fit a tattoo. My two lang a tone or later of a while lang a emo milk canis a pale note to oil canis a little in a more tattoo pacific or lung cancer. Canis only, mamma. Yeah, I live in my fellow beloved Mena, a finger tie, a twang a cellar lay in the air of Maton Fitato, or no fear yearly merely unknown me for pena. A little tub of I see a well and I'll wait for to see you find a pill of chemotherapy left by the chemo. Male Malefango Sevilla, if I know fear, no fear, Maton Fitia, ya for your more unknown now, lay a tattoo, mamma, if I more can I have for it a folding of my ill in a in a year sweet the tongue of fitty or the now the chemo molestatory to the Lua Vanga letter of fitty tattoo telling us and I say, Ocanis. I let on a file latosu in a research in a year my fire on a fire set to a in a by a file mRNA letter or a phone for a little for a little or the technolosina or ever by lato if I know fear and in the ear of fire, on a so so any a tongue of fit, young as a natural tattoo tino. Yeah, I don't know, for my own woman, on a for in a man, we are sitting for in a say, so so in a vine a lalo. Yeah, I tell you, I bring a fire in the ear pass, yea, your vine a more sang only moo. To am a fire or no tattoo, I'll on the yard see sealer. Molissy toes or Molissy's foot toes, Anna. You ought to a woman was a tongue of fitting of a pen, I'm more tattoo. Now, uh, we've been talking PNT cell and something else, and now you to, uh, you're doing research on N NKT cells. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> every immunologist. Is this the thing that you're looking for? <laughs> every immunologist has their favorite cell type. And right. um, a few years ago, we discovered that um, NKT cells, they had been known. They're, they're, they're an interesting cell type. They sort of, um, I like to think of them as the going back to our military yes, military, military yeah. um, they're like sergeant majors oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got your B cells and T cells are your foot soldiers and your NKT cells are the guys who yell at them and tell them what to do and which direction to point the guns oh, and everything right. and so um, we'd known that NKT cells existed for a, a few years when I started working on them in the early 2000s um, and we did a bit of research to show that if you can somehow make your vaccine get these NKT cells on board as well mm. to direct the immune response in the right way and make make it bigger, yeah. then that could be a, a useful addition to a vaccine. And that's a concept that we've been working on for a, a number of years now. Um, we we want to get a product based on this concept into the clinic. We're getting close. Um, but it's still kind of a novel idea that um, that we've developed. There's a few other groups around the world who've been interested mm -hmm. in a similar concept. So one day, I hope to have a drug that's based on this concept of bringing in the sergeant majors to direct mm -hmm. the response and make it better. We're always looking at ways to actually make that immune response to a vaccine mm -hmm. stronger, but um, more effective and mm -hmm. less less danger to the patient um, so any refinement to a vaccine is, is, is seen as something good mm. we know in the, the sorts of vaccines we think you might need in KT cells are probably in these therapeutic vaccines that we've just been talking about yes where you really want to get it get particularly mm. those T cells you want them to be marching in the right direction mm. and killing the right cells and we think NKT cells are the right ones to bring on. So board. the NKT cells are already present in our body. Yeah, well, we've got, yeah. actually got quite a lot of them, um, okay. and it hadn't been appreciated, but it, we've actually they're distributed um, at various locations around the body, and mm. no one actually really knows why they're there. It's a, <laughs> that's one thing I'd like to find out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we just know how to exploit them, but no one really knows why, and it's really interesting because we've got humans have got them, a lot of other. Um, Mammals yeah, have got them, yeah. dogs and cats, but some don't. It's like sheep and cattle don't have them, and we just don't oh. know why. So it's a, it's a, 
It's a real question. We don't know why, mm. but but we do know that you can exploit and make use make the use of them in a vaccine, mm. and that's what we're trying to do. So I guess uh, one has to be careful how you know to maintain a harmony, harmonious or relationship between this and the B and <laughs> T, because if you want them to be the major sergeant major. And the other ones uh, down tools and walk away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> <You'll be losing. laughs> I think all of those analogies apply. You know, it, it could very well be that you, you yell at them T cells too much and they'll yeah. get grumpy. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> In fact, we've got there is a sort of scientific concept like that where you can actually what we call overstimulate a T cell. Oh, right. And it, it, it does it literally downs tools and yeah. walks off the job so mm -hmm. you're not become, far off <laughs> <laughs> become very sick <laughs> <laughs> so the person has to have some kind of mechanism where they say hey you behave because i'm getting a bit <laughs> so yeah i mean it, it's very regulated the immune system is um is a we've talked mainly about initiating an immune response yeah. but there's just as much molecular machinery involved in making sure it's switched off at the right time because right, right. you don't want um yeah. to have a and keep shooting after they kill yeah, the exactly. person <laughs> and, yeah. and that's what we call an autoimmune mm. disease and there's oh, a disease right. that's that's when the immune system goes rogue mm. All right, uh, Melican Institute of Medical Research, obviously uh, they've been doing research of different types of areas over the years. Is there any list of diseases that you want to target or something? Or do you just look at the general concept we, and, well, then, and then branch out to the individual? We, we look at opportunities and uh, we look at the science and we see what's the best fit. Right. So for, I, I understand you've talked about some of the therapies we've been mm. developing like CAR T cell therapy yes. in the past, which is really, um, focused on blood cancers and works yeah. really well so we've chosen that as a target mm. and then i mentioned these therapeutic vaccines we think probably um hepatitis b virus and malaria yes, yeah. um, and the reason we've chosen those ones is we we not only do we know we're getting good t-cell responses but we know that they are actually um, really good immune responses in the liver which is where the hepatitis B virus yeah. resides and where malaria often uh, it's a part of the life cycle of malaria. So we choose it based on the science. We just know we've got a T cell response that goes to the liver. What diseases uh, would that be good for? Yes, yeah. And we're thinking along those same lines, then maybe um, liver cancer might be a, an opportunity yeah. in the future. And we're building up our research capability right. to explore that. Um, and then lung cancer, uh, mm. because it really is a big yes. New Zealand and yeah. Pacific problem. And so um, we've deliberately chosen that as something mm. that we're working together actually with groups up in Auckland who've got their own chemotherapies that they're okay. working and, and this was this idea of combining yeah. the, the immune therapy with the mm. chemotherapy oh, yes, together. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you, well, the means uh, they got the prostate cancer. Prostate cancer was something that we looked at a while ago and um, it, it, we were particularly interested in the, the NK T cells and, and prostate cancer and whether the, it might be a good one to test the vaccines that, right. that um, involve NK T cells. And in the end, probably not. We might uh, mm. focus, sort of redirected our focus a little away. Mm. Uh, but, you know, we always keep these things, these possibilities alive, just, you know, you might come mm. across a scientific mm. discovery that will say, oh, prostate cancer, we've got to try it in that, you know. Are scientists uh, open to sharing the discoveries or do some hide their little gems away and then bring it out when they develop something? Well, it's always been a very sharing open, sort of yeah. culture, but um, then there's, we now know that to get a drug through all the way into into patients, you've got to you've got to put a company around it, and you've got to right. have patents, yes. um, and so there's you've got to play off the let's share this information, but you've also got to you've got to keep patent better, your yeah. ideas, otherwise someone will take steal them, and mm. the idea will go off to someone else. <laughs> so um, you know, it's public good versus good, uh, right. and reality, re commercial reality, commercial yeah. reality. Yeah. But the, the the truth of the matter is, you won't get a drug into patients without commercial backing so sure. so you've got to play yeah. the game yeah. yeah so you've got to be thinking about and, and we're learning there's something that that um, as a research community in New Zealand 
Mm. We're getting better at as the sort of commercial reality if mm. we want to make our science count and have mm. real health impact. We've got to be thinking about how to commercialise our pro- projects. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll help New Zealand if we can. Uh, you know, I think so. I, I've, been, I've been asking a question with uh, previous interviews. What's the cost of one dose of Pfizer? And how many billions are being administered around the world? And who's making all this money? Well, I, I imagine, I don't actually know what the cost <laughs> is, but I imagine it's, it's not very much at all. But um, you know, the main beneficiaries of these have been mm. the big pharmaceutical companies who they'll always claim that they're trying to claw back a lot of the research costs mm. that went into the developing them. But um, I'm sure the balance could be Mm, I think the, the COVID response minister actually announced about thirty-six dollars per dose. Right, it's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> Thank you for that. Let me uh, discuss it. Oh, my last other question before I move to the other the translation. Obviously, the treatment, uh, the vaccine treatment, will actually replace some of the pills that we take. Do you see that? We well, we hope so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's why the, I want to check that if you actually creating something which is targeted some of the pills we're now taking from all the programs we've done on health you take one pill and it's got side effects then you take another pill to fix the side effects and you end up some people end up with four different pills but if what you're proposing to do can actually target that bacteria and then kill it then you shouldn't have side effects hopefully no, and, and what's more is this, if you can treat it with the immune system, the immune system, as, as I was describing before, you, you, you've you ended up with a, a large number of these cells, these B cells right. and T cells, yes. and they, they carry on, they can live for yes. If you get it right, they can survive for mm. your whole life. Or yes. um, so you don't need to keep on giving the treatment. Right. You know, yeah. ideal situation is you go through a couple of injections and you've mm. got this effectively a living drug yes. your own yeah. natural drug against the disease. So mm. help with your army, just bolster yeah, the army's keep, defenses. Keep, exactly. And, okay. Uh, so you don't need to keep on taking it. it would mm. be the ideal, you know. It's been, and we moved to mm. that in some situations. Mm. So. I, I think I. How many minutes have we got? Uh, we did an exercise once where we invited people to come with their pills. Anybody with over two. Yeah. And it turned out 111. So I got this uh, Dr. Dunlop with me and he said, so why do you take that? And this guy, I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously the doctor never explained it. To <laughs> no wonder they got even sicker. <laughs> Thank you. Oliver, I'm going to tell you that Jesus is going to be a little bit. If I'm going to be a little bit, I'm going to be a little bit. If I'm going to be a little bit, Falilea tele, ia tato fita fita, ia te ena ia ia fo ia puma pui pui tato tino te ena ia mo vai rusi ma siama e ulfale tono tato tino. Malefa nau nonga ina ia ma fai ona ia isi tu ifa pe a moli luma nai. E tono fiti tato wal te mina i pe no mo mai olo tam fai tu pui pui ia ina ia so soani i tato immune system. Po vai nga ia te ena ia ia ngasi ngasi o ia mo siama me pena. I am Fayona Faisa Mare in the year Fali Lay, but I told Molly's young Malay to Paul Valle in the Lay Role Motato. Yea, Malay, I told his name more more. Or I lay to any follow out for your little and lay no tattoo, I pen more more. Or she follow away with no toys follow out, I had a sight to fake pair of yeasy van in the tele ele follow out and a tie. And for ye in. Professor Ian Hermit, thank you very much for coming this morning and sharing this. I have learned a lot. Oh, thank you very <laughs> Hopefully, much. Hopefully, we've passed the information on to all our listeners around, uh, not just this country, but around the world. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me on and thank yeah. you to the listeners. Yeah. And all the best for your research. I'll be looking forward to uh, for you coming in next time it's all done and say, we've done it. <laughs> <laughs> and then so I'll too. say to you, here's my hand. <laughs> <laughs> a little sticky patch. But, yeah, yeah, a little <laughs> sticky patch. Yes. No, no, all the best. Thank you very much for coming in. Yo, Tato Paul Kalaminal, Fafonganga Letunu, Tata Noema Professor Ian Hermans, Mile Melican Institute of Medical Research. Yes, they may move more beyond Tata Noa to let them both find you. Um, my yo, if you interview Nelangan Fapin Samoa. Yo, on the toy title, the Yetato Malamalama, more at your toll, Vangan Talanoi, and terminate, yeah, so fast with four.